Uh, my name is Tiffany Goucher, and I'm, I'm honored to be here with you guys tonight. Thank you, Google, and uh, as an entertainment, I appreciate you for the opportunity. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to everyone who is here with us in LA tonight, live in the room. Can I hear you? And of course, welcome to everyone who is watching us live streaming around the world. What an amazing thing technology is. Thank you for joining us here in spirit. Um, let's hear it for Tiffany one more time. Thank you for starting us off so incredibly. Uh, my name is Sam Shui. I am a musician, singer, songwriter, YouTube creator, and I am incredibly honored to be your host for this evening. Um, over the past several years, I've been really privileged to both witness and be a part of uh, YouTube's evolution into a really powerful platform for the creation and sharing of great art, music, and content that is really changing the world, especially in a time when music's message of unity, community, and collaboration is more important than ever. Uh, but we are here tonight to celebrate one of pop music's most iconic and profound songs, um, one that urges listeners not only to become aware of inequality around them, but to actually do something about it. Uh, a song that reminds us that sometimes change begins not with a politician or a government official or world leader, but with the person staring back at us in the mirror with ourselves. It is a song we love for its timeless message and for its unforgettable and anthemic 
musical spirit. Um, it premiered 30 years ago, and we have been enjoying it, dancing to it, listening to it, singing along um, for all of those decades since, uh, as we will continue for many, many years. Uh, but before we take a closer look at that man in the mirror, um, we have some fantastic musicians who are here on the stage who are going to start us off. Can I please have a warm round of applause for the Myron McKinley Trio as they uh, play for us?
Stacey Lamont on drums, Ian Martin on bass, Myron McKinley on keys. Wow, that was incredible. Can we hear it one more time for the incredible Myron McKinley trio? Woo! Guys, that was ridiculous. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, on January 16th, 1988, The Man in the Mirror made its worldwide debut and left an indelible mark on pop music. Uh, three days ago, it had its 30th anniversary, which is crazy. Uh, yeah. And um, what is so incredible is that the song is just as relevant and resonant today as it was when it was first released. Um, now, to celebrate this historic occasion, the song's very talented co-writer, Saida Garrett, who is here with us today, um, she teamed up with the queen of K-pop, Boa. It's here for Boa. And together they created a brand new duet version of this song, which if you haven't, haven't seen it yet on YouTube, it's incredible and will give you all the feels, so go check it out. Um, it was released by SM Entertainment and within the first 12 hours, it had reached 180,000 views on YouTube and is bringing together Eastern and Western audiences so we can all feel the love of this powerful song together. Uh, we now have some exclusive interview footage with these two amazing artists in which they talk the song, the video, Michael, and this incredible collaboration that brought them together. So please enjoy. I was dancing and dancing a lot when I was young. 사실 한국에서 어린 나이에 데뷔를 한다는 게그 당시에는 굉장히 어려웠잖아요. 지금만큼 활성화되어 있는 시기는 아니었으니까. 우연치 않게 캐스팅이 돼가지고 SM이라는 회사를 만나면서 이제 가수가 될수 있는 길에 한 발짝 더 다가서게 된것 같아요. 그래서 한 열, 11살이죠, 미국 나이로는. 11살 이때 회사에 들어가서 
이제 음악을 시작했고 프로페셔널리 데뷔를 한 거는 이제 13살 때 데뷔를 했고 그때부터 저도 이렇게 오래 하고 있을 줄은 몰랐어요. 네. 어 그냥 완전 팬이죠. 저는 정말 마이클 잭슨은 아티스트가 아니라 하나의 장르라고 생각하거든요. 우리도 춤추면서 어 그거 MJ 무브잖아, 뭐어 MJ 사운드 뭐 이렇게 얘기를 하니까 그냥 그 사람은 장르라고 생각하고 어렸을 때부터 정말 뮤직비디오도 많이 보고 가끔 그러니까 저도 집에 DVD가 되게 많아요. 마이클 잭슨의 공연 DVD나 뮤직비디오 클립이나 이런 거를 되게 기운 없을 때 가끔 돌려보면 뭔가 나 자신을 반성하게 되고 <웃음> 힘도 많이 얻게 되고 그리고 얼마 전에 라스베가스에서 원쇼 봤거든요 한 2년 전 너무 재밌어서 이틀 연속을 갔어요 어, 정말 한 번도 그분을 실제로 본 적이 없다는 게 너무 슬프고 아쉽고 사실 그때 빌리지는 불렀던 이유가 그때 몇달 전에 돌아가셨어요 그래서 이 노래를 꼭 부르고 싶다고 사실 스테이지 위에서 댄스곡을 혼자서 불러본 적이 없었는데 그때 그 무대를 하면서 얼마나 더 대단하신 분인지 깨닫게 되고 어, 앞으로도 마이크 제슨이 남긴 음악을 오래 듣고 싶은 마음 사실 계기는 오퍼가 와서 약간 좀 어? 저한테 왜 맨인더 미러를? 이라는 의문은 있었어요. 게다가 사이다 가렛 아티스트 분이 이제 직접 곡을 쓰시고 부르시기도 하셨던 분이라 뭔가 내가 진짜 이거에 참여를 한다고? 그래서 사실 비행기 타고 올 때까지도 별로 안 믿겼어요. 그러다가 오늘 진짜 너무 멋진 뮤지션 분들하고 노래를 하는데 지금도 이게 진짜 내가 한 건가 <웃음> 싶기도 하고 너무 영광스러운 순간이었고 어, 이렇게 저를 초대해 주셔서 너무 감사하고요. 어, 저한테도 가수의 커리어로서 굉장히 앞으로 오랫동안 기억에 남을 만한 추억이 될것 같아요. 너무 영광스러워요. 어, 이렇게 영광스러운 프로젝트에 제가 함께 노래할 수 있어서 음, 가수 보아로서도 행복했고 마이클 잭슨 팬으로서도 너무 행복했고요. 어, 많은 분들이 정말 자기만의 추억을 담고 있는 노래라고 저는 생각하거든요. 그래서 이 음악을 들으시면서 어, 자신의 추억도 회상해보고 또 많은 분들이 이 음악을 들으시고 음, 뭔가 자신에게도 변화가 필요한 분은 용기를 얻으셨으면 좋겠고요. 너무나 아름다운 가사예요. 그래서 많은 분들이 이 노래를 듣고 용기를 가져주셨으면 좋겠습니다. The queen of K-pop. She rocks. I agreed to do this when I heard her voice. I was like, oh, she can really sing. Like, she's no joke. So I was honored to and happy to be here. And it was, it was like a mutual respect. I, like, I love her for what she does. And I love what we did here today together. I've never performed the song in this way. It was um, a, a unique experience. And I'm, I'm proud to say now that I, I performed with the king of pop and the queen of K-pop. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm done. I can die now, I think. <laughs> I was signed as a songwriter to Quincy Jones' publishing company, and at the time he was just finishing what we now know as the Bad Album, and he needed one more song. Um, and so he had a quick meeting with um, his West Coast songwriters, uh, one of which was me. I think there were like six or eight of us at the time. And he gave us some ideas of what he thought he might want for the, 
last song, and I took some copious notes, and I then went to my pro he was he was a producer, and I was just singing. He's a producer and a songwriter, and up until that point, I was just singing his demos. So I went to Glenn Ballard, and I said, Quincy's looking for a song for Michael Jackson. Do you want to write it? with me and he said sure like what is he looking for I said I don't know I don't I don't really know what he's looking for he said well let's just see what we come up with and he stood up to go to the keyboard cut to two years before that day I was having a writing session with a jazz pianist named John Beasley and we were writing well I thought we were doing well the phone ring instead of letting the machine pick up he picks up the phone and just starts this banal conversation oh nothing I'm just not doing nothing. And I'm flipping through my lyric book going, no, I didn't just hear him say he's not doing nothing. No, he didn't. No. And I'm in my mind, I'm, I'm going, Ugh. and then I hear him say, the man, what man? Oh, the man in the mirror. So I wrote down the man in the mirror. Two years later, I'm at Glenn's house. He gets up to go to the keyboard. I start flipping through my book. He plays, doom, 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 doom. And the phrase, man in the mirror appeared on the page and it literally, not, not literally, but it leapt off the page at me. And at that point I couldn't, I, I was just trying to write as fast as I could. I was, I was like, Let me, uh, I'm just trying to write. And it all just came out all at once. Like the first verse and chorus of man in the mirror in like 10, 12 minutes, right? And by the time we finished on Friday night, Quest Publishing was closed. I didn't want to wait all weekend and turn it in on, on Monday. I, I, I did not want to do that. I called Quincy, I said, Glenn and I wrote this song, it's, it's great, I, I, I would love for you to hear it. So I took this cassette to his house and I said, Q, the only thing I ask is that you just get back to me as soon as you can. He said, all right, all right. He called me three or four hours later and he said, Sid, this is the best song I've heard in 10 years. And I'm like, and then he said, but, and you know how when Charlie Brown's teacher talks, wah, 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 I didn't really hear anything he said after best song in 10 years. I just wanted to live in that moment. And then I heard him say, you know, Michael has, we've been in the studio for two and a half years. You know, Michael has yet to record anything that he didn't write. A couple of days later, Quincy calls me at my house and he says, and I quote, we're in the studio recording your old piece of song. Right here, right in this room, right here. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then Quincy said, but Michael has a problem with the chorus. And then it was Charlie Brown's teacher anymore. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear anything he said after we're in the studio recording. I'd want to live in that. And then he said something like, the chorus is too, Michael wants more to, to say in the chorus. And they said, hold, hold, hold on. And then I hear, come here, man. Come here, man. And the chorus said, yeah, Sid, Michael really wants you to, to bring home the, the idea of, hold, hold on. And then I hear, come here, man. said, hold, hold on a minute, Sid. Quincy Jones puts Michael Jackson on the phone. Now, I don't know about you, Dave, but when I was coming up, Michael Jackson was my husband. My cousins had Tito and Jermaine and, and uh, Randy, but, but Michael, that was my husband. So in my mind, I'm on the phone with my husband. And the first thing Michael says to me is, I love this song. Thank you. The second thing he says to me is, I love your voice. So he talks to me about what he wants the next few lines to say. And when he got the demo, the, the song was just the, the first chorus of Man in the Mirror. And, and the extra four lines that I added was, you gotta get it right while you got the time, because when you close your heart, then you close your mind. I had six different stanzas for him to choose from. And those are the four lines that he used. And the rest is history, darling.
When Quincy was speaking about the kind of song that uh, he was looking to record, I knew it had to be an important song. I knew it had to say something, and I knew it had to mean something. And I don't really know, how, like I said, it just, it just, I was just a vessel at the time. I, I was, I, I just remembered, I wasn't even, I, I couldn't even push the pencil fast enough. I would just, it, it was, so I know that I, I was just an instrument. I know that, that I just happened to be in the room at the right time and the muse visited. But I, I felt that the lyrics had to be important enough for him to want to record it. I knew that there had to be some meat there, some substance there. So I just wanted to write something that meant something. So I, I think I just wanted to write something that meant something to me. And then I assumed it would mean something to him. I am so proud to be associated with, with this song because it is timeless. And I think what makes it so is the, the, the message in, in the lyrics, the message in his delivery, the, um, the idea that in order to make a difference, in order to make a change, you have to start with yourself in order for it to reverberate to your family, from your family to your community, from your community to your state, to your country, to, your, to the world. It all, it all uh, reverberates from within. And let me, let me just tell you this story. I'd been on tour with Michael for a little over a year, and we were uh, in Germany somewhere, some city in Germany, and it was the middle of the afternoon, and we were at a huge soccer stadium, because that's, that's where Michael plays. And, and we were doing a sound check, and I wanted to hear what Man in the Mirror sounded like in the soccer field. So I go out to the field, and I'm listening to the band, and this woman comes up to me, and she said, excuse me, Saida, uh, somebody told me uh, that you wrote Man in the Mirror. I said, yeah. And then she started telling me, I have to tell you that that song saved my life. And I looked at her like, what? She said, I'm serious. She said, when the, when the song came out, I was in a very dark place in my life. And she said, I wanted to hurt myself. So she said, I went to get the record and I just started playing. And when that song came on, she said, I played it over and over and over again until I didn't want to hurt myself. That's when That's when I realized how powerful music is. It saves lives. And I felt like I was doing my duty as a songwriter. When you can affect that kind of change in someone's life, then it means a lot. It means a lot to me as a songwriter to put something like that out into the world that resonates with people on such a deep level. And I hate when I cry in interviews. <laughs> Tito, I need a tissue. <laughs> anyway. Cut. <laughs> We are so lucky to be here tonight with the incredible Saida Garrett, who's gonna be performing the song live for us. I don't wanna make you guys wait any longer. Um, I, I, I'm just excited to hear this because this is really a special moment in the history of this song and really in the history of pop music. So without further ado, please help me give a warm, warm welcome to the incredibly talented Saida Garrett. I'm so happy to be here and thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here, Mr. Jones, my mentor. Thank you for being here, Mr. Ballard, my co-writer and dear friend. I'm so privileged to be here and this song, I'm very proud to perform. And it goes a little something like this. Mm -hmm. 
gonna make a change for once in my life, yeah. It's gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. See the kids in the street, not enough to eat. Who am I to be blind, pretending not to see their needs? A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one-man song. Yeah, they follow each other on the wind, you know, 'cause they got. Thank 
I, I need to take a moment to acknowledge Quincy Jones, you changed my life. You introduced me to the world as a singer and a songwriter, and I will be forever grateful for you, to you for that. Thank you so much. And <laughs> yeah, and Glenn, Glenn, you are the best. What? Where are you? You are the best writing partner a girl could have. I've loved you for 30 plus years. I love you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Quincy, are you going to say a word or two? It's amazing. Is it 30 years? 30, man. Damn. You know, I, I was just a child at the time, so. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. I'm only 84. <laughs> Never forget that, Sid. You were late to the meeting. Yes, I was. Uh, two hours. <laughs> no, it wasn't two hours. I was late, yes. But, but you, you wrote the song, though. That you and, you, and, uh, <laughs> you and Glenn wrote the song. That's all that's important. Thank you, David Choi. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Google. Had a blast. I just want to say thank you all for coming. Thank you, everyone who is watching us from around the world. Thanks, of course, to SM Entertainment, to Google, to our incredible performers, Tiffany, the uh, Myron McKinley Trio, and of course, Saida Garrett. Thank you so much for sharing yes. this song. Sid, did you do this with Boa? You didn't record it with Boa? Yeah, you got to check it out. It's on YouTube. It's real good. <laughs> It could have been just another song, but you gave it a home. I'm proud to sing it. I'm proud to have uh, toured with Michael for a year and a half, performing it for the world. Um, touring with him was like touring with Jesus. So you can imagine the legions of fans and all his fans became my fans, and it's all because of you, man. Thank you. Let's hear it one more time for Saida Garrett, for the man in the mirror, 30 years. God bless you, Thank you, you Boa. Thank you Thank so you much, Boa. Thank you, Boa.